This is a breeding zone. Um, this map isn't completely accurate. This is about the best I could get, but it really gives you a, a take on how important the highlands are to uh, the breeding population of, of great grays. Um, I mean, this is, you, you could put a, a line around a lot of these, these green parcels, and a lot of them are the forested grounds in the highlands, um, and then in, into Ferry counties. I do know of some uh, nest uh, populations over in Pond Array, and then um, I have heard of, um, not for certain, but I've heard of some down in the blues, but primarily east of the Okanagan in the highlands and then also on the, the reservation. Occurrences, so they're primarily breeding in, in the highlands um, that, that I could find, and then um, we, we do have some other occurrences over in the Loomis area south towards Conconelli. Uh, in that that fourth, uh, in that, those forests, and then also in, in the Blue Mountains, and a, a lot of research has been done in the the northeastern Oregon area, and that's where most of the research uh, comes from. And um, but again, here's here's home for us, and um, again year round. Great great picture here that Tom uh, was kind enough to let me have this. You know, I kept trying to find one of the best pictures for identification for people. You know, the, the, mount, the mount really shows you what um, people always come to me and say, oh, I, I saw a great gray. First thing I ask is, well, what color was its eyes? Uh, they were, I don't know, I didn't look at its eyes. It was just a big owl. <laughs> so if you ever think you saw a great gray, one of the, the telltale signs are, are the eyes. They're just beautiful yellow. And... I'll show you some pictures of some other owls later, and you, you'll see a, a real contrast difference. Um, like a barred owl is just uh, beet black, but great grays are beautiful yellow, um, and they just they, they look they look right into your eyes. Um, the beak, you know, look look at the contrast between the eyes and the beak. They're almost as yellow, if not more yellow, than the than the eyes. Uh, real yellow beak. Other owls, other similar forest owls have almost an olive or a brown beak. So that really bright yellow beak um, is also a, a telltale sign of a great gray. It's gray too, right? So everybody says, oh, I saw a great gray. And I say, well, okay, what color was it? Not oh, brown. Okay, so you didn't, you, you didn't, you didn't see a great gray because they, they truly, the reason they got the name was they're gray, right? So they're, they're a large gray owl. Uh, we talked about the yellow eyes and the yellow beak. And then the, the huge, large facial discs you, you'll see around the eyes, right? And no ear tufts. I wish I had a, a, a mount of a um, great horned owl, but great horn's a fairly common owl that, that everybody um, sees around. And you, you, you'll see the ear tufts, hence the horned owl, right? Great grays, are, there's no horns. You won't see any protrusion above here, they're just perfect round, uh, symmetrical. So no ear tufts and large, large facial discs. This is the facial disc that I refer to here. Just, this is really prominent when you see them. And you'll see it on, uh, on the owl there, um, but not, not as um, definite. That owl is quite a bit older and got some dust on it, but um, the, the facial discs really, really show the, the owl off. And then, on this, you can see the, the white and black markings underneath the, the bill or, or the chin area, if there is a chin on, a, on, a, um, on an owl, but they have prominent white and black throat patches. And again, you can see that on the, on the mound as, as well. Strix species. So my wife says, what is a Strix? Did you spell something wrong here? And typically I would have spelled something wrong, but um, she's a fourth grade teacher and she was proving to this woman the other night and she says, honey, come here, I think you've spelled something wrong. And so I said, no, Strix is their species. That's the, the, the family they're in, the genus. And um, they're generally docile. So um, one thing I, I ask folks if they come up and say, oh, I saw a great girl. I said, well, did it fly off? And if they say yes, okay, I'm kind of on the fence, and so I start asking more questions. But if they say no, it just stood there, and I walked right up to it, and I kind of had a picnic lunch underneath it and took 50 pictures, and then I got bored and walked off. And I said, well, you probably saw a great girl if, if they described everything else. Uh, and um, 
Uh, others that have seen them have probably recognized that same trait as well. They're very, very docile, um, and you can walk right up to them with, with relative ease if you're, you're cognizant of just being nice and quiet and, and respecting their, their distance. Now, they, they will fly um, depending on time of year, but a lot of times you can walk right up to them. I was out in the field with a, another biologist and we were doing some stream stuff and great growl flies across the road and lands in a tree and I stopped and this biologist had never seen one before and I said, well, just go out and take a picture. And he looked at me like, well, it'll fly off. I said, no, no, it won't. Just go up, walk up and take a picture. <laughs> um, you know, it, there are certain traits about certain species and, and if you, you know them, you can get really close and Anyways, he got out of the vehicle and walked literally right underneath the tree and took a picture. So, my, my point of that is, if you do see one and you've got a camera or you just want to get a mental picture clo close up, is just take your time, walk up, and they're generally fairly docile. Mm -hmm. 